a staple here in downtown Ludman since 1936, Cackle Hatchery, who first just started servicing their local community and now service all 50 states. Let's go hear their story. So Jeff, 1936, Cackle Hatchery started a long time ago. Give me a brief history of how it got started here in Lebanon, Missouri. Uh, well, my granddad in 1936 started a little uh, poultry hatchery here in Lebanon. Back then, about every town in the United States had a small hatchery or several hatcheries in that. the town. Uh -huh. yeah. So then it was, you're just sourcing local. Yes. Mm -hmm. I mean, they, we did have a uh, hatchery in Dixon and Buffalo, so mm -hmm. we actually had three locations back then, but still locally. Uh, and then later on, we uh, started shipping some, and they actually went out on the railroad at the time. Things have changed a lot I can since say, then. Now you've got like, I don't know, a block in, of buildings right here in downtown Lebanon. How has that growth, how has the industry changed? Uh, my, when my granddad was doing it, it was great. It's a robust business, mm -hmm. uh, but as commercialization started, uh, refrigeration, people started moving to the city. Mm -hmm. uh, nobody wanted to raise chickens anymore. They wanted to go down to the grocery store and get their meat and their chickens. So the business really kind of died out, and all the small uh, hatcheries across the United States pretty much closed their doors. Mm -hmm. So we are one of the surviving hobby hatcheries in the United States. It's a cycle business, mm -hmm. you know, it's a seasonal business to begin mm -hmm. with. Well, today we're here to start off with the egg and see what happens next. Let's go see the entire process from, from egg to chicken here at Cackle Hatchery. Okay. So, as you said, it all starts with the egg. Where does the eggs come from? Well, we have about uh, 60 to 65 farms uh, that are down in uh, Seymour area, Missouri. Uh -huh. And uh, we have, um, uh, they're with Amish farms and okay. families. So uh, we put out our breeding stock um, out there with them. So we do all the, the blood testing, the culling, the, the male to female ratios, getting the pens all set up. Uh, but their job is to basically take care of them and uh, bring the Is that eggs. a contract similar to you would uh, like a Tyson's or another hatchery where, or not hatchery, but where another um, farmer's owns the land, but you own the birds? Exactly. Okay. Usually this uh, room here is completely empty. Mm -hmm. And uh, every Thursday we'll bring in about 300,000 eggs. And then we tray those up for two different settings. And by the time we get them moved out and trayed up, Seven days later, we have another 300,000 eggs coming you, in. So I saw these laying around. These are the trays you're talking about? Yep, so they'll okay. come into the hatchery with a, uh, an egg case like this. Mm -hmm. And the eggs, you know, will fit in what we call a flat. We have over 200 different varieties. So all these egg cases mm -hmm. have got to be marked on the outside what they are so we don't get them mixed up. Well, I mean, big goose trays. So the size of the tray changes the size of the egg? I yes. Mean, Now this is one of your mini incubator rooms that you have throughout the facilities, correct? Uh, yes, uh, we have a lot of uh, incubators in lots of different buildings here at Cackle Hatchery. Uh, these are, uh, we have a, quite a few of these are called nature forms. We have the old Robbins incubators too, but uh, these are some of the newer ones. Well, certainly an incubator, you know, to operate correctly. Mm -hmm. uh, you've got to have the right temperature. They've got to... What's that temperature? Well, it depends on the year or okay. the time of the year, okay. and it depends on how many eggs are in the machine. Okay. So, I mean, it, depending on all those factors, anywhere from 98 and a half to up to 100. Oh, wow. So, how long does the incubation period take? How many well, days? yeah, for a chicken egg, it's 21 days. Mm -hmm. They come out of an uh, incubator tray, and they go into a hatching tray, and basically the hatching tray is... Um, you know, it's a confined tray where they can't jump out, and but it also gives these them... these are rolled and the temperature's regulated here. They're actually hatching in these trays. Yeah.
It is, sure is a busy place around here on Hatchet Day. There are orders being filled right and left, but I want to talk about the diversity and the type of birds you're raising. What do we have in front of us? Okay, so uh, we're just down to some basic breeds at okay. the end of the year, but uh, we have Buff Warpington baby chicks here. Is it okay if I grab yeah, one? Yeah, Okay. Just, they'll jump out of your hand, so just <laughs> cuddle them up, kind of put them in a jail. Okay. Yep. And these are Buff Warpingtons. They're pretty gentle type uh, chickens, you know. Uh, in the, they're a heritage breed. I mean, in the past they've been used for as an egg layer and then also a meat chicken. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but the hens uh, will uh, lay about a medium size egg. They're not our best egg producer, but they're pretty good. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but they make really good mothers, you know? So if you want a hen that will turn broody and raise some baby chicks, mm -hmm. pretty good choice, Buff Orpington. Yep. What are these black ones over here? Uh, these look like Dominickers. Yep, so these are Dominick, Dominickers. Sometimes, uh, you know, uh, you might hear somebody say, you know, it's grandma chickens or what grandma used to raise, uh -huh. you know. So These are them? She either had Dominickers or Bard Rock. Yeah. So they're uh, a real nice, durable uh, uh, chicken also and lay a nice brown egg. So, yeah, we, we have a lot of different breeds. I mean, we have some brown Lagerns down here that are, uh, they lay a white egg. So all these others are brown egg layers, mm -hmm. but this is a white egg layer. Now, they're a little bit more skittish and maybe not as well suited for a pet. They're gonna be a little bit flighty, yeah. but you know, they're a really good uh, white egg layer. So people are buzzing around going many, many different directions. What are they doing? Uh, well, everybody in here, uh, they're putting up orders, uh -huh. either a wholesale order or a direct retail order. So that's what we're doing today. It's a ship day, we gotta hurry up, get them in their packages, get all the orders put up, make sure they get on the truck at the right time so we don't miss the flights out of Kansas City yeah. and they can get in the system and get to their new homes. Well, what a process. So let's fill an order. Last but certainly not least, Jeff, where can folks go to learn more about your history, your family business, and, and buy some birds? Okay, yeah, so uh, certainly we have a uh, website that you can go to or you can order our catalog. This year we did not have a catalog for the first time. Wow. But so uh, we are getting it set up this fall, so we do have a 2021 uh, ca uh, catalog. But uh, Normally, everybody goes online or they can call into our service uh, center, which is back here. We have about 20 operators that can take orders over the phone. But a lot of people just go online. Uh, we have lots of tools on our website that they can kind of determine, you know, what they might want. We have, uh, you know, they can go in there and maybe find what's the best chicken for me or what do I want, you know. Mm -hmm. So it'll help them determine if, you know, they're, they're looking for a pet, are they looking for egg production, are they looking for something to butcher and eat. So there's a lot of tools to help them figure out what they want. And then, of course, we have a huge variety. Now, mm -hmm. so that variety can be a stumbling block to some people. There's just too much. So, <laughs> a little overwhelming for me, for yeah. sure. So hopefully we have a few tools on there that'll help them figure out kind of what's best for them.